Yeah, I was kind of expecting a video package at some point just because I know you're not going to get Brock Lesnar in the building for all these dates and John Cena might need a night off every now and then, you know, leading into his ass whipping that he's going to get at SummerSlam. But I was kind of pissed at the fact that they had to play the whole thing in full twice throughout the course of Raw. Like, with all this material that you have to build from this, you know, wonderful card that Triple H was talking about to start the show off and you're playing this five-minute eight minute whatever however long it was this promo video package twice in the same episode of raw that's kind of bullshit to me the promo itself promo not a promo the package the package itself the wwe create creative no no who's the people that put it together the director <laughs> the people that's in charge of like putting together the, the video people packages. that put Video whatever. Packages together. Whatever. Whoever the fuck they are, they're the MVP in this whole thing because it definitely elevated the the prestige of the feud, I guess. But Brock Lesnar, it's just whenever he talks, man, he reminds me so much of Sid Vicious. And just that he's this big, intimidating dude. He's supposed to be like this badass. But whenever he opens his mouth, he makes himself sound like a fool. He sounds like he's giving a speech about how he's going to beat John Cena. Rather than using his persona to just talk about how it's a foregone conclusion. How he's going to go in and whip Cena's ass because that's what he was supposed to do. And Cena, you know, he he's he did a pretty good job in the promo. And I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm looking forward to the match. And I'm hoping that we get something a lot better than this in the Go Home Show. Because playing that twice in the same episode was kind of, just kind of soured me. I don't even want to talk about John Cena in this video package. Like, he played his part well. He was great and everything. But this is about Brock friggin' Lesnar. He had so many great moments in this video package. When he started out, and he was just like, who was Brock Lesnar? I'm an ass kicker. I don't give a fuck about this. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I'm just here to win this, and I'm here to do that. It just seemed as if it was, like, so unscripted, and they just sent him out there, and they were like, say whatever the hell you want to. If you happen to curse or say some words we don't want on the screen, hell, we'll bleep it out. Just go out there and just talk. Say whatever you want to. But I'm guessing that they probably had to tell him not to say, I came back for money. They probably are like, okay, cut. Could you change that to, I came back for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? All right, cool. Yeah. Then he went on, and as he started to speak, like, Every single thing that he said was amazing. I can't even say he was gold in this video package. He was platinum. Like, he, he, he was diamond. That's how amazing it was. When he had that line about, what did he say? If I had never left WWE, there would be no John Cena. He would be at home buying, you know, Fruity Pebbles and eating them at home rather than being paid to eat them. I was like, wow. Like, this dude, this is the type of person that I've wanted to see for so long in WWE with this I don't give a attitude and he's just out there he's like i don't care about your opinion i just want to win i want to hurt people because it makes me feel good to hurt people and the fact that we have brock lesnar in this position everything that we know about him the things that he accomplished in wwe as impressive as all of that is then you add on everything that he accomplished outside of wwe and where he stands right now man he was amazing in that uh promo and manny you were talking about all of the things that you wanted Brock Lesnar to do in this uh, promo, in this interview video package. I think he did all of that plus more. Like, I, it didn't come off like a speech to me. It came off like some real shit. And speaking of it being real, like, it just has such a great legit feel to it because it was created in the same vein of... MMA promos, how they do with those MMA fighters when they're going into a big match, and it just came off amazingly well. Like, I see, really, really loved it. See, I don't know. See, for me, I agree with you that everything that he was saying, all the points that he was making, spectacular, top-notch, excellent entertainment, excellent for the feud. I was just speaking to the way that he delivered some of the stuff. It just seemed like Somebody that's coming in and, and being a badass, I don't know what it was about it. It just came off as something that, not that was rehearsed, just that he wasn't necessarily comfortable with. That uh, he, I don't know, it just seemed like he needed a little work to me. I don't I don't know. I, I definitely didn't see that at all. It had a very natural flow to it, and it came off just so real to me. He was just sitting there stating all of this shit matter-of-factly. Like, yeah, I did this. I'm an ass kicker. Bam, 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 bam. And it... Yeah, I, I think it worked because I, I don't know what it is, 
But I've seen different types of things like this with Brock Lesnar in WWE. And for whatever reason, when he is standing up and he has a mic in his hand, it's fucking terrible it really is i posted this video <laughs> on uh twitter over the weekend where he 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 just has horrible delivery on the mic and i said thank the lord for paul Heyman." but in here when he's sitting down and he's just himself and he's not screaming or hollering or yelling he's just telling you the real yellering. fucking story yeah i say yelling you said yelling when screaming or <laughs> i how i hollering and yelling how, how, <laughs> <laughs> when he's not <laughs> screaming, hollering, or yelling, he's great. And it, it just came off so amazingly well to me. Like, that was amazing. I didn't even care that they weren't on the show because that, man, that, that, that said everything that needed to be said. Now, was it so amazing that you wanted to see it twice? Yes. Honestly, yeah. Come on, nah. That's see, that, up a lot see of that's time. the thing, though. We we, we we give the WWE a lot of shit for replaying stuff, but been someone who watched Impact from 2005 to 2010, on Impact, shit would happen, and it would just never affect anything. Like, they would never show a replay, and then they would go to the next week, and they still wouldn't show a replay. Like, watching TNA from, like, 05 to 2010 really makes you appreciate what the WWE does. They show it because it's fun. Fucking important. I mean, watching the Michael Jordan list NBA has in '99 made you appreciate Michael Jordan that much more. But I'm not judging T, uh, WWE by TNA standards. I'm judging them by WWE standards. And by WWE standards, you have this so-called excellent card that Triple H talking about to kick off the show. Why couldn't you find some content to fill up the time so you didn't have to play the goddamn promo twice in the same show? See, the idea was. They show it twice because you better freaking have seen it. They're making, like, you, you make sure everyone's seen it. It's important shit. This is some real shit. You gotta know, like, I'm sorry that you show up on time and you don't want to watch it twice. Popped in at 10 o'clock and missed it, you'd be pretty goddamn pissed. 